So today I want to talk about how to protect your van or your RV while you're not around because obviously we're not going to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week inside our vans or our RVs. So how do you make sure that someone doesn't break in and steal something when you're not there? And that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, a lot of cars, as you know, these days come with security systems built in. So if someone tries to break in, an alarm goes off. A lot of times it will even call or text your cell phone as well. Really nice features to have. Unfortunately, a lot of these vans don't come with security systems like that. And the security systems they do come with, if they come with one, are pretty weak from everything that I'm reading. Now, there are ways that you can upgrade your vans and include and add in, rather, uh, security systems like the one I just described, but they can be costly. It's a process to do that. And there are actually some pretty simple and really cheap things that you can do to protect your van without having to install an expensive security system like that. So the first few here might be a little bit obvious, but I'm gonna go over them anyway. And that's things like parking your van overnight or even during the day in safe locations. And there's actually websites you can go on to see crime maps and where areas are that have more crime and less crime than others. So as you're traveling around, you could check out those maps and make sure you're staying in safer locations. And just making sure if you're gonna park somewhere, it often helps what we like to do is make sure there's other people around there as well. This is one of the reasons we love parking in Walmarts overnight because there's almost always other RVers there. We always kind of pull closer to them, not like right on top of them obviously, but closer to them makes us feel a lot more safe and secure. Not to mention the fact that Walmarts, they always have security going through them. I always see cops there coming in the middle of the night too to usually grab a snack or a drink, but hey, they're there and it's pretty nice to have that kind of uh, security and kind of that comfort of knowing that they're around a lot. Now, another really easy thing that you can do that most people don't know about is when you leave your van, you can put up the window shades. Most of you guys, like we do, we have window shades, we have blackout curtains, we could put them up. And therefore, when someone's walking by, they don't know if there's someone inside of it. And if there's someone in the van, people aren't going to break in because it's going to be you know, more of a challenge for them to steal something. They gotta fight with whoever's in the van. You know what I mean? So it's a lot safer if you put, put it up. So someone walking by doesn't see what's inside and doesn't see that it's empty as well. And that alone is going to make a huge difference right there. Anything you can do to slow down a potential you know, thief or to make your van look less desirable than someone else's car is going to help prevent break-ins. Um, another thing that we do is we have a dog. You know, he's not a very big dog, granted, but he's a b dog that loves to bark at anyone who comes close. He, he growls at them. He's, he's not the friendliest dog, but that will help deter thieves as well, assuming that the dog is in the van. All right, so we're inside the van now. Time to talk about some things that are a little bit more fun, in my opinion, the security cameras, things like that. I wanna show you what we currently have and then what we're upgrading to. So this is the Wise Cam. It's a security camera. There's an app on your phone. So you can see in live time uh, what's going on in your van. You can get set up. Um, as long as you have Wi-Fi in the van, it works. And you can also stick an SD card in there so that you can always watch it on replay later in case you didn't catch it on Wi-Fi or something happened, you wanted to review the footage. It continually uh, goes on a loop and overwrites itself. So it maybe it gets a few hours and then goes back and writes over that data and just continues in a loop like that. And this works pretty well. There are a lot of limitations to it. One of the struggles we've had is, you know, setting it up just right so that we can get the entire van in there, including the opening. You know, we have two of them and we've kind of got it to work, but just trying to find a place that's out of the way is a lot of wires. You also need to have Wi-Fi for it to work. It works pretty well, but we wanted something a little bit nicer. So this is it, the Owl Cam. And what this is, is it's a dash camera. So it points out the front of your van so you can record 
anything that's happening on the road in front of you in case there's an accident it's recorded you could show it to the police and say hey it wasn't my fault the person in front of me like jumped in front of my car Wh whatever it is right and it also has a camera that faces into the van as well that way you can also record what's happening in the van now the other cool thing about this is that it also has all sorts of alerts so if you're away from the van and the van starts to move if there's some motion detected you'll get an alert on your phone you can see what's happening in the van and it's all through 4g so you don't need to have wi-fi in your vehicle for it to work it's automatically going to connect to the cellular network and it includes a year of it for free and then after that i think it's just a hundred dollars a year or something like ten dollars a month which is definitely a lot cheaper than a regular phone plan so it's if it works and it provides a protection that it says it does then to me that's worth a hundred dollars a year for that so it also allows you to do live view from whenever you from wherever you want if you get into a crash it's automatically going to call the police for you if you don't respond um, and says it you should be able to install it in six minutes so i'm going to put that to the test we're going to open this up and see if you can really get this thing set up in six minutes all right so let's take a look at what's included do a little like unboxing nice little sticker here it says you can, says you can call anytime it says seriously call anytime you want pretty nice alcam we love cars and the people in them that's why we built alcam that's a nice little message insulation guide what's in the box Let's make sure we have everything. Looks right. And wow, honestly, I'm surprised how small this is. It looked a lot bigger in the pictures, but, it, but it's really nice. Really nice feel to it. Okay, this looks like a charging cable or something. And this looks like how you attach it. This is a tuck slip. Don't know what that is. Figure that one out. Spare suction cup thing. Okay, cool. All right, so it says first step here. Look under the steering wheel to find the OBD2 port and plug in the adapter. So before we get started, I do have a big concern that I want to work out right away because um, the way this works is this has a little suction cup on it that's supposed to suction cup to the window. But for our our van here, we have this window shade that we use every night when we go to sleep to block the light. So anything we put on here, we can't suction cup it to the window. It's just not gonna work. So we need to find an alternative and I also need to make sure that anything we put up here it's actually going to be able to not get in the way of this. So before we do that, I gotta figure out that part. So the way this Alcam works is it comes like this. This is pretty cool. This is like the part with the suction cup. This is the Alcam. It actually just magnetically attaches here, which is pretty neat. And then it comes with this extension arm. So I gotta figure out a way to make this work without the suction cup on the window. What I'm thinking is over here on our dashboard, we have this clip thing that I guess is used for papers. It's pretty worthless to us, but my hope is that I can clip the Alcam in there somehow and it will still work with the shade. So I'm gonna try that. So oh, that was very easy to do and it works, but the concern here is if the camera will be able to see out the front. I'm not gonna really know till I turn it on, will I? Let's try turning it on. All right, so it comes with this cable and I'm supposed to plug this part into something underneath the steering wheel that looks like this plugs into. So let's take a look, because uh, I think I found it. See that but it's blinking green 
So that's a good sign that I think I did that right. All right, so the next step in this process would normally be to take this wire and kind of hide it. But before we do that, I do want to plug it in and make sure that the positioning is going to work. Because otherwise, this whole thing is going to be a bust. How do we... Plug it in. Ah, and now it's turning on. So while the owl cam is is loading up or whatever it's doing, I'm going to now download the owl cam app. All right, so setting up the app and connecting it with the device was really, really easy because the app just walks you through exactly what to do. And now my owl cam's working. You can see it's facing both forward and backwards. There you go, you should be able to see the camera on the bottom and and the front on top, which is pretty cool. But let's actually see if this position will work before I go through the whole process of finishing the setup. Okay, so moment of truth here, and you can see, hey, it works. It's, you know, we have a really, really, really big front, so it doesn't look like it's getting everything, and the window shade is blocking the bottom just a tiniest bit but I think it works maybe if I can just get a little bit higher it would be perfect okay so quick update so remember when I set this up before I took this piece and plugged it in now it comes with three of these sizes short one medium one and a long one so actually what I did was I've been I tested out the long one that didn't work didn't make it better but I tested out the short one and the short one actually gives us a much better view out the front. So that's what we're going to use. It's shorter, but it's perfect. So if you're setting this up, I do recommend you play with these lengths and see which one works best for your van or car, whatever you're setting up with. For us, it's a short one. So now that we have that in place, it's now time to hide this wire, which actually for us is going to be really easy because we can kind of just tuck it underneath the window shade and it should pretty much disappear. The first step though is to run it through this part. Kind of you tuck it in here. From view to make it look pretty nice. Okay, so now it's time to hide this wire. Which every van's gonna be a little every car's gonna be a little different. I'm just gonna try to tuck it under here. All right, so now we've, we've gone over the whole windshield. It's kind of sticking down here. And now it's time to use the device it came with. This is called the tuck stick. It's supposed to help you kind of hide the wire. So this part's gonna require just like a little bit of finagling. I don't think there's really like a set, a set way to do this. All right, so last step now is underneath here. There's just this excess wire hanging down. So I'm just going to gather it up with one of these bungees things, zip ties. There we go. Now we have it installed. You can't see it at all, except for right here. Maybe I can just fix that up a little bit. So that's it, we're all done. And that was pretty easy. I was really happy with how easy that process was. And look, the screen can still go up and down and it doesn't get in the way of the camera. And it definitely took me longer than the six minutes, but it was a little bit of a special case here because this is not a typical car. I wanted to make sure that this could see out the front correctly. And I spent a little bit extra time because I was making the video, but it was not, it was a very painless process and I'm not good at this stuff at all. So big props for the company for making it so easy to install. Other cool things I discovered while, while setting up and reading the manual, if anyone ever steals the Alcam, the company will actually replace it for free, which is pretty awesome. And like I said, it runs off of 4G LTE. So if you have a cell phone signal, you'll be able to look at it live on your phone. If you don't have cell signal, as soon as it gets cell signal, it will send the video to the cloud so you can view it later. 
uh, which is pretty cool. And um, another cool thing, so right now, what it it's doing is just recording. But if I say, if I see something cool, like let's say there's like a beautiful sunset or we just drive through like uh, an amazing canyon and I want to remember it, all I do is say, okay, presto, and then testing two. And now it just saved that clip and I can access it on my phone and it's now labeled with the, oh, it's now labeled with um, the word testing two. So I can easily find it on my phone. Um, very easy to use. All right, guys, that's it. If I was able to do this just fumbling around, then you guys can do it as well. And now comparing the Wise Cam versus the Owl Cam, I can already tell that the Owl Cam is much, much better. It's getting a full view. Uh, I just reset it, but it's getting a full view of my entire van. This is the perfect location to set it up to be able to see the entire inside of the van as well as out front as well. And it's always on, it's always recording. Even if the van is off, even if we don't have Wi-Fi, it's still working as well, which is pretty awesome. Now, there is a huge price difference. The Wise Cam is much, much cheaper than the Owl Cam, but things always go on sale. So make sure if you wanna get this, I will have both of these products linked up in the description. Those are our affiliate links, but that means that we just get a small commission if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use those links. So check them out if you want to, if you end up getting it. And um, if you got some value out of this video, if you thought it was fun, if you thought it was educational, then I would appreciate it if you smash a like button. That lets me know that you want more videos like this and tells YouTube that this was a good video and that other people should watch it as well. And leave a comment down below, letting me know what security measures you've used for your van or your RV and what's worked for you. I tried to do something that was somewhat medium price, not too expensive, but not you know very cheap either. You know, something right there in the middle. I think this one is going to work out really well for us. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, subscribe to the channel for more tips about van life and life on the road. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. All right, so one final test here. This does have a sort of motion detection, so if I shake the van, I should get an alert on my phone. Let's try it out. Oh, and I just got an alert. It worked.